So here we're going to go through a pretty quick step through of the basal ganglia and neuroanatomy. Uh, this is core to movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease. We'll first go through the anatomy and then the physiology. Uh, so we have a T2 MRI here. This is the general region of interest of the basal ganglia, sort of midsection and axial view there. Uh, this is an infarct of the basal ganglia to give you a sense of its location. And then we're going to scroll through in the vertical axis so we can see the scope uh, of the basal ganglia. All that's bright there is part of the basal ganglia. Um, so uh, these are the various structures within the basal ganglia. Caudate head here and then the putamen lateral to the globus pallidus medial and then the caudate tail there. Nomenclature of the basal ganglia is its own challenge. So the corpus striatum comprises the caudate, putamen, and globus pallidus. The globus pallidus is also referred to as just the pallidum or the paleostriatum. And then the caudate and putamen together are called the striatum or sometimes the neostriatum in, in contrast to the paleostriatum. And then the putamen and globus pallidus together are called the lentiform nucleus here. Uh, and then there's a neat way in embryology in which the globus pallidus sort of develops into the putamen. You can think of a marble being thrown into mud as the pallidus and the putamen. Then hepatolenticular degeneration refers to uh, degeneration in this lentiform nucleus. Uh, and then there's additional differentiation uh, here. This is coronal view with myelin staining. Um, this is our anatomical illustration to correlate. So the caudate head here, the internal capsule coming down through here, uh, and then we have the putamen and the globus pallidus here. And then this is just a, uh, this region within its broader circumstance. And then also this three up view and MRI of the different uh, basal ganglia regions. Basal ganglia circuitry, the direct and indirect pathways, uh, these are really important uh, to know cold. Uh, so we've set up our anatomy here. These key fiber tracts, these are probably a step beyond what a lot of people need to know, but they do help make sense of what we're going to learn, which is the direct and indirect pathways. So now we're ready to walk through this basal ganglia circuitry. So the thalamus excites the cerebral cortex, which excites motor neurons. The basal ganglia is the engine that acts on all of this. So the cerebral cortex excites the striatum, which again is this caudate putamen. And then via the direct pathway, there's inhibition of the globus pallidus internal segment and the substantia nigra pars reticulata. This is not the pars compacta, which is the, the part of the substantia nigra that has dopaminergic cells, we're going to put that in uh, towards the end. But the substantia nigra pars reticulata is part of the direct pathway. So there's inhibition of an inhibitory structure, so there's overall excitation, and we go through the simple math right there. In contrast with the indirect pathway, you have inhibition of this circuitry, so overall, you have three inhibitory signals and it's overall thus inhibitory. There's also this extra loop that the indirect pathway has that goes through the subthalamic nucleus. It has the same end effect uh, because it has inhibition just through a different channel. Um, and when we think of a stroke in the subthalamic nucleus, this is this hemiblismus, this wild ballistic flinging movements if we, have an, if we have a stroke in the subthalamic nucleus. So substantia nigra pars compacta has these dopaminergic cells. How they act on the striatum uh, is different for the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. For the direct pathway, it's excitatory on D1 receptors. And for the indirect pathway, it's inhibitory on D2 receptors. Now there's multiple different dopaminergic receptors. We're just simplifying it using D1 and D2 here. So what does this produce? So we, if we go back to our math here, if we excite the direct pathway, which is already excitatory, then we have excitation. In contrast, if we inhibit the indirect pathway, which was inhibitory, we have overall excitation. So both the direct and indirect pathways ultimately have excitatory effects 
on motor output through different means. So that's a quick walkthrough uh, of the anatomy and physiology of the basal ganglia. Again, really core to movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, and, and other such disorders.